Does baby Ronnie look a little bit bigger to you? asked Susie. We all had a closer look and agreed that baby Ronnie had grown. Burp him some more, Jamelia said, and Molly started patting him again. Burp, he grew. Burp, he grew some more. And he wasn't just growing bigger, he was growing up. More, we all cried, and Molly patted the toddler's back. Burp, more. Burp, more. Burp, more, more, more. Burp, burp. By this point, Molly had to lower him onto the grass because he was almost as big as her and he was nearly back to his real age. Just one more burp would do it. Molly swung her arm and gave him a great big wallop. But instead of just burping, Ronnie did something I've seen my baby brother do a hundred times. Runny Nutbog threw up all over us. We were covered head to toe in warm milk fresh out of Ronnie's belly. So gross. By the time we'd wiped it off our eyes, we were face to face with a rather confused looking regular Ronnie. He was back. What's going on? And why am I wearing baby clothes? He asked, blinking at us. But just as I was about to open my mouth to try and explain, I spotted something flying through the air towards us. It was a water balloon. Yes, cheered Eric from his bathroom window. Gotcha. I've been waiting to do that all week. We couldn't tell if it was water or tears in Ronnie's eyes but none of us were sticking around to find out. Well, that's been the freakiest part of my summer so far. And if I learn anything from that day, it's never to call Runny Nutbog a baby. It's a pretty good idea not to call anyone names full stop, I reckon. And I've got a feeling Ronnie might just have learned a lesson too. In fact, he's been almost nice to us ever since. Hardly any wedgies at all. Who'd have thought we'd be learning so much in the summer holidays? Hope you're having a great time, Frankie. P.S. With all this summery sunshine, I thought I'd definitely spot the shadow again, but nothing yet. However, after Eric so Ronnie and I ran to, however, after Eric so Ronnie and I ran back to my house, I couldn't help but notice that there was an extra set of wet footprints on the dry pavement. September. Dear Danny, summer is well and truly over. The first day back at school was grey and rainy and just a little bit too cold, but everyone had new pencil cases, which totally made up for everything because nothing is better than a new pencil case. Susie had a flappy plastic one, Molly had one that you could see through, and Eric had a shiny metal one that was indestructible, unless Ronnie Nutbog stamped on it. Technically, I don't have a new pencil case. I still have the awesome one that Mum made for me when we first moved to Freaky, but it was still the coolest of everyone's. I got it out and showed off the secret compartments and detachable yoghurt spoon and mega bright torch, which, to be honest, hasn't totally been the same since the night of the storm, but still works just fine, as long as you don't mind a little electric shock every now and then. Which is lucky for me, because without it, I'd be in a whole heap of doo-doo right now. And here's why. Once the initial pencil case excitement wore off and learning began, things quickly settled into the usual lesson vibe. But then Miss Tinky went and made this month's ten times better by dropping some awesome news. Class, she announced. Some of you already know that in a few days' time, there's going to be a very special event above our town. A total solar eclipse. Everyone thought that this was super awesome but not because of the rare astronomical phenomenon that would align the sun, the moon and the earth so perfectly that the moon would cause a total blackout in the middle of the day. No, the kids thought this was awesome because... And so that we can observe this phenomenon, you will all be having the afternoon off school, added Miss Tinky. That's right, we would all be getting the afternoon off school. But to my left, I noticed a shaky hand being raised in the air. Yes, Jamelia? asked Tinky. Jamelia looked terrified. Miss, she asked, asked, what about the legend of the freaky fray bug? No, I had no idea what a fray bug was either. Some of the other kids in my class knew what Jamelia was talking about, but most didn't. So Miss Tinky wrote this ancient poem about it on the board. It was pretty cool already, but I spiced it up a little to make it even better. The Legend of the Freaky Freybug, rethunk and illustrated by Frankie A. Brown. A long time ago, in a freaky far away, in the blistering, sun, blistering heat of the midday sun, a crowd gathered in Freaky Square. 
A shadow was cast by the moon as it passed, and it fell over everyone there. They cheered and high-fived at the sky with glee, at the annual eclipse celebration. But there was something in the dark with a deep, dreadful bark that looked like this awesome illustration. It's a lion, it's a bear, it's a monster, they cried, for this dog was no poodle or pug. As it prowled through the streets looking for something to eat, someone screamed, It's the Freaky Frey Bug! Its fur was as black as the shadow of the moon, its eyes were as bright as the sun, and a thick grey fog that surrounded the dog scared the pants off every one. The moon soon cleared and the sun returned, and thankfully no one was eaten. But not a year goes by when the shadow in the sky doesn't bring back the freaky dog demon. Every year it appears as the sun goes black, every year looking hungrier and thinner. So find somewhere to hide, stay at home, stay inside, or you might become the Freaky Frey Bug's dinner. So Freaky Legend has it that the Freaky Frey Bug is not some kind of weird bug like I first thought, but a giant dog. And it can only appear and hunt for food during the blackout of a solar eclipse. Apparently, there used to be loads of sightings of this this dog, but he's not been seen for years now. Pretty scary stuff, right? Well, Jamelia certainly thought it was, but then Jamelia scared of everything. She even made a list once. Jamelia Pointer's scary list of scary things. The dark, scary. Clowns, super scary. Creakers, terrifying. The sound of the hoover, petrifying. Freaky Freybug, horrifying. Despite it appearing on Jamelia's list, everyone else laughed when Miss Tinky read the poem as though it was all just a load of tish tosh. Jamelia shook her head. It can't be tish tosh, she told us, told us all. I know that the Freaky Freybug is real. How? asked Ronnie. Because the Freaky Freybug ate a friend of my great granddad's cousin's uncle during the total eclipse of 1892, Jamelia shrieked. Total tish tosh, right? Everyone agreed. And so we forgot about the scary giant dog that could potentially slink out of the shadows to eat us during the eclipse and spent the rest of the class learning about how eclipses work. Here's a little diagram to show you. Sun, freaky, moon. I guess this is easy for us to now know now with super awesome telescopes and satellites to help figure it out. But back in ancient times, before there were computers or cars, when our parents were young, it must have been proper scary stuff. Imagine just walking along when suddenly the whole sky turns black and the sun goes out like a light. No wonder people got spooked by stories about giant dogs that lurk in the shadows. Anyway, Jamelia spent the whole lesson on edge, looking over her shoulder in case a giant black black hound crept up on her. Ronnie barked like a dog, which made Jamelia fall off her chair with fright. Most of the kids thought it was super hilarious. I felt pretty bad for her, but I did think she was being a bit silly, believing that old story. I mean... Giant dogs, as if. Little do we all know that Jamelia would have the last laugh. When Eclipse Day came, there was such a buzz around the school. Everyone had been making these special viewing boxes so we could watch the Eclipse without damaging our eyeballs. Mum wouldn't help me with mine. I asked her to, obviously. No one ever did my homework for me, Frankie. I used my own initiative, she told me as she dished out spaghetti and meatballs for dinner. Easy for her to say. She's an inventor. I'm just a kid who doesn't listen properly, so mine ended up looking like this. But it passed Miss Tinky's safety test, so I was allowed to use it, and I forgave Mum pretty quickly because of the spaghetti and meatballs. Yum. School finished early and the whole school marched along the bank of the glistening green water of Lake Freaky, all the way to the old town square to watch the eclipse. The school band, McFreaky, were even playing, which made the whole thing feel like a great big giant festival. Ronnie figured out a way of making a little extra money to spend in the tuck shop by selling Eclipse Fest t-shirts. I wish I thought of it first. Plus those t-shirts were super cool and selling out fast. I asked mum if I could get one, which was a big mistake, because she shut down Ronnie's whole business and made him give her all the money back. The good news was that mum confiscated the leftover stock, so I've got a whole box of Eclipse Fest t-shirts now. I'm going to keep them in the box and sell them in 40 years when they're vintage, like Dad's band t-shirts that look and smell about a thousand years old. All of a sudden, everyone started this big countdown and had their eclipse viewing devices at the ready. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
It felt like New Year's Eve, except when we reached one, there wasn't any cheering and kissing, just silence, as everyone watched the black moon starting to block out the sun. It was super awesome seeing the moon make the middle of the day look like the middle of the night. The whole town watched as the shadow fell over us like a blanket of darkness, and I couldn't help but notice that this shadow had a slight hint of green to it. It was in this green, shadowy silence that I first heard the growl. My friends and I looked at each other. I could tell they'd heard the same thing. Was that you? Sorry, I had beans for lunch. But it wasn't Ronnie Nutbug's bum that had growled. It was something far worse, far louder, far freakier. Then a thick fog came from nowhere, covering the whole square, except it was thicker than normal fog, more like smoke. Then we smelled it, the unmistakable whiff of dog's breath. It was hot and close. Then we felt it, a thick matted fur brushed past us all as though we were sheep being circled by a hungry wolf. Suddenly it appeared before us in a flash of green. Its eyes were as bright as the sun. Then we saw its dark fur against the white fog. Its fur was as black as the shadow of the moon and we knew there was only one explanation. Jamelia ripped her eclipse box from her eyes and screamed, It's the Freaky Fray Bug!